Hello, welcome back to the Friday video where it's another review of sorts. This is my second time actually recording this intro because the last time it was actually focused, the camera was focused on the couch and not me. So that was a fuck up on my part. Anyway, um, yeah, so over my old Yu-Gi-Oh channel uh, early on this year, I reviewed the three Yu-Gi-Oh movies and I asked three questions for each movie. And the first question for this review is, does Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie 2004 Pyramid of Light still hold up? Now, I'm also gonna break fourth wall here. Uh, as I'm recording this today, uh, see Thursday, the 7th of June, I believe it is. Uh, sorry, the 7th of July. Uh, Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series has sadly passed away. So, yeah, that that's hit me hard as well. So, anyway, without further ado, please do enjoy this Yu-Gi-Oh! review. Hi there, welcome to my TCG channel. My name is Michael, and as you can tell by the title, I am going to be reviewing the very first Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. And there's a reason why. Now, you, if you've been around on my channel for a while, you know that last year uh, for a format in Yu-Gi-Oh! I done a Yu-Gi vlog series and in Yu-Gi vlog 12 I sat down and watched all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! movies and reviewed them. I didn't really review them that much as well as after re-watching it I definitely did not like that video. So I decided you know now that I have much more experience with reviewing with reviewing movies because uh, I do have a movie review channel, which is linked in the description below, that it might be time to actually revisit these movies four months later and give a proper in-depth review. So for the next three weeks, this week and two weeks after, I will be reviewing all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! movies, of course, starting with the 2004 movie, um, The Pyramids of Light. So let's start off this review. So the plot takes place sometime after the Battle City tournament in the anime, and we see that one of the pharaoh's old enemy's tomb has been discovered, and is brought then to Domino City. With Yugi's now fame from beating the creator of Duel Monsters in the Duelist Kingdom tournament, and then going on to win in the Battle City tournament, and the fact that he now has all three Egyptian god cards, Yugi becomes the target of random duelists who want to duel Yugi for his god cards. While this is going on, Seto Kaiba, the one person who has lost to Yugi multiple times, sets out to find a way to beat Yugi's god cards and take back his crown of the king of games. As he is dueling the creator for a card to defeat Yugi and his god cards, Yugi, Teya, and Yugi's grandpa are at Anubis's display and Yugi's grandpa reads an ancient prophecy which reawakens Anubis. When Yugi has a vision of Kaiba being in danger, he goes to find him, only for Kaiba's younger brother to pull up and bring him to the Kaiba Dome for their ultimate duel. So this movie has the feel of a longer episode of the anime, with what happens in terms of characters. Yugi is the same as he is in the anime, preaching the heart of the cards and concern for his friends and Kaiba, even though Kaiba has been a prick to him since episode 1. But whereas Kaiba's character is concerned with, for this movie, it's somewhat different and is more like how he is in the Dark Side of Dimensions, where he is obsessed with wanting to beat Yugi to prove he is the better duelist, even though he has lost to him time and time and time again. He does everything he can to find a way to defeat Yugi, even offering his prized Blue Eyes White Dragon to Pegasus in order to find a way to win. There isn't really much to say about the other characters, in this movie as they have little importance to the plot. As for the big bad of the movie, there isn't really much to say other than he's a villain alright, who doesn't really show up until the last 20 minutes 
just to then lose instantly to Yugi. The animation for this movie is good, but also not so good, with how a lot of the time the characters are off model, and they look like they're melting, like the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. That being said though, in other places this movie looks great, with the bigger budget for a movie it can look really well. I love how with every card being used, they made it look like their real life counterpart. With the art in the middle of the card, the card's name on the top, with readable text, and the same for the effects if it had one, as well as the monster's type and attribute, as well as the attack and defense stats. For a movie that came out in 2004, the animation still looks good. So Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie Pyramid of Light was released back in 2004, almost 18 years ago, and was made on a budget of 20 million USD and only made back, unfortunately, 29.2 million. And it was slammed by critics from the research that I'd done. Rotten Tomatoes giving it a 5%, 15% on Metacritic, and IMDb giving it a 5 out of 10. But what do I think? So, what did I think of this movie? Well, the answer is I enjoyed it. I loved it when I was a kid and I enjoyed watching it now. Does the plot make sense? Kind of. But I wouldn't take it too seriously as it's clearly a non-canon movie. But that doesn't take away from my enjoyment. I would watch this on repeat on my old VHS copy that I used to own as a kid. I loved the soundtrack and all the voice actors did an amazing job. So as the title of this video says, does it hold up? My answer is yes. I enjoyed it back when I was a kid and when I watched it four months ago, and even now for this review. And if you can find a way to watch it, or find the DVD and Blu-ray for it online for cheap, I'd recommend that you pick it up and watch it again. And well, there you guys go. That's my in-depth review for the first Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. And it wouldn't be until another six years for another Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. But I have one question to ask and answer for the next movie review. Does it suck? Find out next Friday when I review Yu-Gi-Oh! Bonds Beyond Time.